Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of the GRE. We have already solved every single math problem from this book that I'm holding in my hand, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure you work through every single math problem from this book if you want to get a decent score in the math. If you're interested in watching solutions to any of the problem, math problem from this book, you will find the solutions to the problems from day number 251 through 400. Most of the problems, the vast majority of the problems that appeared in the second editions were the exact same problems that appeared in the first edition on the exact same page numbers. If you're interested, in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of solving quantitative comparison questions. We are in the process of solving quantitative comparison questions because there aren't too many of those quantitative comparison questions in the, in the, in the revised GRE, the new book. So to get some extra, ex, extra practice, we are solving right now. We are in the process of solving quantitative comparison questions from this book right here, the 10th edition of the GRE general, general test, the old, the, old, the old book, the old exam. If you can get hold of this book from somewhere, that will be wonderful as well. We are on page number 123. We are on page number 123 and we are, we are about to solve the penultimate problem on the page, problem number 9. Here is what the problem says. It says we are going to print a book and we are going to print page numbers beginning with page number 1. Page number 1 obviously, we are going to print 1 on it. And page number two, we're going to print two on it, and so on and so forth. What we're being asked to compare is this: the number of pages, the number of pages in the book. If the printer printed, we are told, number of pages in the book. How many number? How many pages are there in the book? If the printer printed 189 digits in numbering the pages, we have to figure out how many pages are there in this book. In a book such that if we were to count every single digits that we use to print the page numbers of the book. We find out that the total of 189 digits were printed in numbering the pages. Once we figure out how many pages there are in the book, we are supposed to compare it against 100. Let's start with something simple. Let's start with very simple. Let's start with instead of 189 digits, let's print, let's, let's find out how many pages there are in the book if we want to print 9 digits in numbering the pages. But this is very simple. Page number 1, you will going to print 2. On page number 2, you are going to print 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. This is just silly. If you printed 9 digits in printing of the page numbers, then the book must have 9 pages. What if, there are, what if we are told, what, what if we were told that the number of pages, what if we were to, if, what if we were, uh, what if we were to ask to figure out the number of pages in the book, if we are told that the printer printed 19 digits in, the, in, the, in, in numbering the pages. How many pages does this book have if we, end up, if, we, if, we, if we ended up using 19 digits in printing the page numbers of this particular book? Let's find out, shall we? Well, we already know that we are going to print 9 digits to print page number 1 through 9. If we printed 9 digits, then the book must have 9 pages. This one has 19 digits. Well, let's find out what happens, shall we? Next page is page number 10. When you print, when you print the page number, when we print the page number on page number 10, we're going to end up using two digits, one and zero. Beginning with page number 10, every page will take two digits. So ten, ten, page 10, page 11, page 12, page 13, and page 14. Voila. These five pages, 10 through 14, it's not four pages, it's five pages. These five pages, 10 through 14, will take 10 digits to print their page numbers. 10 digits over there, 9 digits over here, 10 plus 9 is 19. If we, if we were told that we printed 19 digits, then the book must have 14 pages. What if we were told that, the, the, what if we were told that we printed 119 digits? How many pages does this book have? Let's find out, shall we? If it turns out that we print, if it turns out that we are told that we printed 119 digits in numbering the pages, then the first nine is very straightforward. Page one through nine, page one through nine will take single digits. Beginning with page number ten, beginning with page number ten, every page that you print your page number on takes two digits. We are told that we printed a total of 119 digits. 119 digits we are told. We know that the first nine pages, 
will use up 9 digits which means we must have printed another 110 digits but we also know that beginning with page number 10 beginning with page number 10 each digit each page rather takes two digits we printed an additional 110 digits 110 digits must imply the 110 digits imply that we must have printed 55 more pages 55 more pages so how many book does how many pages does this book have this particular book given the fact that we printed 119 digits in printing the page numbers this particular book must have 55 pages whose page numbers were two digits and nine pages whose page numbers were single digits for a total of 64 pages so in the second column had they put down 64 the answer would have been C if they put down 65 the answer would be B our original problem as it appears in the book it does not say 119 digits it says 189 let's find that out shall we 189 should be quite straightforward the first part stays the same so now we have 189 digits we're going to end up using the first nine digits to print page number one through nine that leaves us with 180 additional digits to print 180 additional digits since each page required two digits to print its page number that tells us that 180 divided by 2 we must have printed an additional 90 pages an additional 90 pages plus the first nine pages turns out that this particular book turns out that this particular book has 99 pages this particular book has 99 pages and we are being asked to compare that 99 against 100 99 against 100 the answer is B answer is B because second column is bigger than the first column that's all let's do the next one shall we problem number 10 the last problem on the page Problem number 10 says that the average of the three quantities we are told Oh, I forgot to tell you the percentile of the problem that we just finished into. It's interesting to know the difficulty level of each problem that we do. It's, it, 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 helps us, it helps us gauge our performance. It helps us to compare our performance against everybody else's performance if we know what sort of percentile how difficult was that question supposed to be question number nine that we just finished when it was given in the original exam when it was given in the, the real exam 59 percent of the people got it right 41 people got it wrong the one that we are about to do problem number 10 before i forget the percentile one more time let's put it down only 44 percent of the people got it right average of x, y and 6 we are told is 3 here is our column A here is our column B we are being asked to compare x plus y over 2 versus 3 over 2 versus 3 over 2 let's see what we can do It's a good idea, it's a good idea always, and if I forget to remind you, then you have to do this on your own, make it a habit. It's always a good idea, and I always make sure, uh, uh, try to remember to get out of your way so that you have an unobstructed view of the blackboard. Pause the video at this point, pause the video, solve the problem on your own, and then once you have solved it yourself, then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in a second. You will see that you will learn, you will get a hell of a lot more out of it, you will learn more if you do the problem yourself first, even if you have trouble doing it, even if it turns out that you got it wrong, you will still learn more if you try it yourself first. Pause the video and unpause it. I'll give you two seconds to do just that. Well, here we go. So we are told that we have three quantities, x, y, and 6. So their sum, x plus y plus 6, if we were to divide their sum, how do we find, how do we find the average of three numbers? We take the three numbers, we add them up, and we divide by how many numbers we have. We have three numbers x, y, and 6. There are three numbers there. So their sum divided by 3, we are told their average is 3. Their average is, is means equal, equals 3. If you multiply both sides by 3, we find out that the sum of these three quantities, x plus y, plus
plus 6 must equal 9. Of course this has to equal 9. If the sum of three numbers, rather, if the, if the average of three numbers is 3, if the average of three numbers is 3, then the question we are asking ourselves is, what number, what quantity on the top here, what quantity on the top divided by 3 will equal 3? The quantity on the top that divided by 3 will equal 3 is 9. 9 divided by 3 is 3. That's why their sum is 9. We're not interested in there. We're not interested in the fact that the sum of all 3 is 9. What we, are, what we are interested in, what we are interested in is this quantity, x plus y. So let's subtract 6 from both sides. And if we find out that x plus y equals 3. That's all we are interested in. The reason why the percentile is so low here, listen very carefully, okay? The reason why the percentile is very low here is because people do not understand a simple concept when they come across a quantitative comparison question, which is, what are these questions called? These questions are called quantitative comparison, which is why I make a point of writing down the word computation and cross it out. These questions are no, not called quantitative computation. Nobody is asking us to compute anything. Just compare them. We are not interested in knowing what x is. We are not interested in knowing what y is individually. We do not care what their individual values are. All we are interested in is in their sum. And their sum we just found out is 3. x plus y is 3. Therefore, x plus y is equal to 3. So the sum is 3. And in the bottom we have 2 here. So it's 3 over 2. 3 over 2 versus 3 over 2. The answer is C. The answer to this problem is C. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.